Hello, boys and girls, and welcome back. Today, we'll be reading the book Animal Architects by Libby Romero. All right, and what do we think this book is going to be about? What are architects? Let's find out. Master Builders. Do you know the story of the three little pigs? Each little pig built a house. One was made out of straw, another out of sticks, and the third out of bricks. Pigs don't really build houses, but many animals do build their own houses. Animals build their other things too. They are gifted architects. And sometimes the results are amazing. Busy birds. You've probably seen a bird's nest, but have you seen a nest as big as a haystack? You could in South Africa. Sociable beavers build huge drooping nests over the tops of trees and telephone poles. The birds build a roof and frame of a large, out of large sticks. They use dry grasses to make dozens of rooms. For comfort, they line the rooms with soft grasses and other materials. Finally, they arm each entrance with sharp, spiky straw. This keeps animals that hunt birds like snakes out of the nest. Red overbirds are major sculptures. Sculptures. After it rains, the birds sh shape shape bits of mud and clay into dome-shaped nests. Inside the nest, there is a back room. A mother lays their eggs there. This makes it easier to protect the eggs from the predators. The bay weaver. Weaver is another artist. This bird is a master weaver. The male collects long strands of leaves and grasses. Then he weaves and knots them together. Often, several males build nests close together to form a colony. Some birds are master builders. Others are great artists. Male bolder birds are both. To attract a mate, male bolder birds build boulders and sh or shelters out of sticks. Then they decorate the front. Some bolder birds use natural items such as rocks, moss, nuts, beetles, feathers, shells, or flower petals. Others use colorful and shiny human-made objects. And if none of that works, the male singing and dancing might do the trick. Spinning spiders. Grass spiders spin funnel webs. They prey when prey gets near the opening, the spider darts out and grabs it. You don't have to look far to see the work of spiders. These animals build their silky webs just above and everywhere. Cobwebs webs might hang in corners in your home. Webs like funnel-shaped tunnels cover grasses and shrubs. Some of the most beautiful spider webs are or they hang between the leaves or plants or trees. Orbs webs have rows of circles connected by lines. When the silky threads move, spiders know that the predators or prey are nearby. Most spiders add sticky glue to their webs to trap prey but not the feather leg lace weaver. It used static clean. 
the, this spider's tiny spinner spinners makes super thin silk. The spider yanks the silk from its body and combs it with hairs on the back of its back legs as it fills the web. This creates a, an electrostatic charge. The charge attracts insects. It makes them cling to the web just like socks sometimes sticks to towels in a dryer. The nest casting spider doesn't attract prey to its web. It takes the web to its prey. This spider holds its web as it hangs from a silk thread. When prey approaches, the spider throws the net down on its prey. Not all spiders spin webs. The trapdoor spider digs a tunnel. The door of the tunnel has a silk hinge. The spider closes the door and waits. If an insect is close, the spider jumps out, grabs it, and drags it into the tunnel. Ants and termites. Ants live just above everywhere. Australian weaver ants live on bushes and trees. They build nests out of leaves. Working as a team, the ants pull and bend leaves into a tent-like shape. Then the ants pick up their larvae or larvae. A larvae squirt out silk that will glue the nest together. You've probably seen an ant hill. Ants don't live in ant hills. They live under them in an underground nest. The ant hill is just a pile of dirt and sand that the ant colonies removed when it built the nest. These nests are like underground cities. They have lots of rooms connected by tunnels. Each room has a purpose. There are rooms for lying eggs, raising the young, and storing garbage. Leaf cutter ants even have a room to grow their own food. Many termites live underground, but some are famous for the mounds they build above ground. Cathedral termites make their mounds of, out of mud chewed wood in their own spit and poop. Compass termites build tall, thin mounds. Each mound points north. Scientists think termites build them this way to control the temperature of their homes. In the morning, the sun shines on the wide eastern side of the mound. Termites go there to warm up. At noon, when the sun is the strongest. It only shines on the narrow tip. The rest of the mouth stays cool. Mm -hmm. And these are the mouths that they're speaking of. Alright. Cathedral termite mouths can be more than 15 feet tall and up to a hundred years old. Bees and wasps. Mason bees live by themselves. Some females build nests on their own. There are many kinds of mason bird bees. A few make special nests out of flower petals. First, the mother bee digs a tube-shaped hole in the ground. Next, she lines the hole with flower petals and mud. She fills part of the hole with pollen and nectar. Then she lays an egg on top. To keep the egg safe, she folds over the flower petals and caps the holes with mud.
And what is pollen and nectar? Have you ever heard of those words? You're probably familiar with honeybees. They live in hives. Honeybees don't build the outside of their hives. They move into human-made beehives or hollow trees, but they do build everything on the inside. Are you smarter than a honeybee? How would you design a home that doesn't waste any space? Ask the honeybee. The honeycomb they make has cells on both sides. The six-sided cells fit together perfectly. This design gives them the most space for growing eggs and store, storing honey and pollen. It also uses the least amount of wax to create. The inside of a hive is filled with sheets of six-sided waxy cells. The sheets are called honeycomb. Worker bees make wax and chew it until it's soft. Then they shape it into honeycomb. Paper wasps build nests with six-sided cells too. They make their papery nests. The wasps chew up pieces of wood and plants. You might have seen their umbrella-shaped nests. They often hang under door frames or behind window shutters. Oregon pipe mud droopers build nests out of mud. The female wasps takes a, mouth, a mouthful of mud and forms it into balls. She carries the mud balls back to, to the wall. Then she spreads them into long, thin strips to make a nest. Cool facts about animal architects. Spider silk is stronger than steel and super stick scratching. Recently, scientists made artificial spider silk in labs. It could be used to make everything from artificial limbs to stronger bite helmets. Hmm. The Darwin's dark bark spider spins the biggest, strongest web in the world. Webs can be up to 82 feet wide, as long as two buses. A beaver dam found in Canada was 2,788 feet long. It was so big it could be seen from space. Some bowler birds paint the walls of their towers to, with a mixture of charcoal dust, spit, and plant juices. They use their beaks, like in this photo, or pieces of bark, as a paintball brush. Great apes usually build a new nest each night. Sometimes the new nest is right next to the old one. Room to grow. Caddisflies are moth-like insects. Their soft, squishy larvae live in the water. To protect themselves, some larvae spin silk cases around their body. Others collect nearby objects and build their own suits of armor. Bagworm moth larvae do the same thing on land. Each species of bagworm moth makes its own special case. Some look like pine cones or little log cabins. Spreader bugs don't need it to collect things around them. They grow in a pile of foamy spit that they make themselves. Right after spitter bugs hatches, it makes a sticky liquid. Then it starts to blow bubbles. This bubbly foam covers the body. It protects the nymph from heat and cold. It also keeps them moist as it grows into an adult.
ocean architects. Some of the great animal architects are corals. Corals are tiny animals that live in warm ocean waters. Individual corals are usually less than half an inch across. To stay, to stay safe, some corals build hard skeletons around their soft bodies. Hard corals like these live in colonies. As gener generations of skeletons stack up, they form a coral reef. Over hundreds of th or thousands of years, these reefs grow into massive ocean ecosystems. Great, what are ecosystems? And these are the corals. The tiny male pufferfish is another busy builder. For about 10 days, he makes patterns with his fins on the sandy ocean floor. He adds corals and shells as decorations. This creates a fancy round nest to attract females. Decora decorators crabs have little spikes on their outer skeletons. Pieces of sponges, shells, and seaweed stick to spikes. Once the crab's body is covered, it blends in with the surroundings. Creature comforts. Usually animals build things that help them survive, but for great apes, it's more than that. They want comfort. During the day, apes often build nests on the ground for napping, but at night, they usually build nests high up in the trees. This keeps them safe from predators. The apes start with a bottom layer of sturdy branches. Then they weave a layer of thinner sticks. Finally, they top it off with a comfy layer of leaves. Animal architects are everywhere on land and sea, underground and up in trees. Take a look around your neighborhood. You might be surprised at what you see. All right, and that is the end of this particular book. I hope you have enjoyed it, and I hope you have learned some new interesting things about animal architects. How are they similar to human architects? All right, you guys, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.